Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game between uh, Bobby Fischer and Borislav Ivkov. Um, uh, on a few days ago, on the uh, 14th of February, on Valentine's Day, no less, uh, we've heard the sad news about the passing of Borislav Ivkov, the legendary Serbian Grandmaster. And of course, a lot of you guys requested that I show a game, so uh, I, I could show any game. Uh, he had so many brilliant games. He had a very, very long career and uh, he's been playing chess, of course, his entire life. Uh, but I thought you guys might enjoy a nice one uh, against Bobby Fischer uh, as uh, well. He's the probably the the, the the player you guys know the most. Uh, and it's from a very, very fruitful year uh, in the chess world. It's, of course, from 1959. Both of them uh, just finished the tournament in Mar del, uh, Mar del Plata, uh, where they shared uh, second place. And now both of them are again playing in this uh, very nice tournament in Santiago, uh, where some very strong players uh, uh, appeared uh, from Europe. We have Borislav Ivkov and, and Pachman, and, uh, well, from the United States here, of course, Bo Bobby Fischer, uh, who is... Um, uh, not yet the, the beast uh, he will become, but he is a very strong, uh, you guys uh, remember the 1959 candidates tournament and you know uh, how uh, Fisher played there. Uh, but um, yeah, just wanted to say before I show the game, uh, when I first started learning about chess, um, okay, I learned uh, learned the rules when I was very young, but I didn't um, uh, pick up a, a book or anything maybe until I was... I don't know, maybe 19, maybe maybe something like that. And the first book uh, I got from my grandfather, he didn't even have the books. He said, I have them stashed somewhere in the attic. If you want, you can go up the attic and, you know, look for them yourself. And it was a really big attic. And I found the, uh, the box that contained all of his old books. And there were like, I don't know, maybe 50 of them. Not all of them were about uh, learning uh, chess. Some of them were about, you know, just uh, biography. Some of them were uh, historical events, some, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but the first two books that I picked up... Uh, that, that I actually learned from were uh, Chess Principles uh, by uh, Jose Raul Capablanca. And the, the second one was uh, actually by Borislav Ivkov. I still have the book. Uh, it's uh, uh, two books. One is the uh, theory. Oh, sorry. This one is the, the End Games. Uh, sorry. Uh, there you go. Uh, the chess School. So End Games by Borislav Ivkov. And the other one is, uh, you can see, the, the Theory of Openings uh, by Borislav Ivkov. This is the second part. I also have the first part. I just don't know where it is. So uh, I think the first one is open games and semi-open games. And the second one is closed games. Uh, but th that's the first time I really started learning about chess. And I really uh, was so impressed about what what kind of magic, uh, you know, is contained in these books and uh, how much you can actually learn. And of course, uh, as I went through the books, I started going into bars and started challenging players. Uh, and they were all very impressed with my uh, increased, uh, increased uh, skill. Uh, so that's, uh, I, I have Boris Ivkov to, to thank for that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, okay, that being said, let, let's uh, check out this game. So it's from the 1959 Santiago tournament. Uh, he's playing against Bobby Fischer. Fischer has the white pieces uh, and he opens with e4. And of course, uh, the, the players uh, from... from uh, <laughs> uh, these areas uh, knew how to play against Fischer, and of course, uh, Ivkov goes for e6. He goes for the French defense. Uh, we have d4, d5, and now knight to c3, going for the for the standard line. Bishop to b4, the Winnebar variation by Ivkov, uh, and Bobby grabs more space in the center with e5. And now nowadays, okay, c5 is pretty much automatic, but Ivkov goes for knight to e7. So it's a bit of a uh, different move order. Uh, we have a3 by Fisher, a move you, you pretty much have to play. And now uh, Bishop captures on c3. We have b captures. And again, not c5 as it would be standard nowadays. Uh, uh, Ivkov goes for b6 first. Now you might have ideas of bishop to a6 uh, because you know that white slide square bishop is always a monster against uh, the, the French defense. So Fisher goes uh, queen to g4, puts pressure on g7. And now knight to g6. And now uh, bishop to g5, attacking Ivkov's queen. Uh, even though, okay, nowadays maybe h4 with the threat of h5 would also be uh, pretty much an automatic, but this is 1959. So bishop g5 with queen to d7, Ivkov uh, um, uh, gets the queen out of the way, and now only now h4. So preparing h5, uh, Ivkov plays h6, challenges uh, Fischer's bishop, bishop back to d2, and now uh, h5 preventing uh, uh, Fischer from playing h5 so queen back to f3 and now finally queen to a4 so the king side is now safe uh, fisher can't really do any damage there and we're putting pressure on white's queen side so the c2 pawn is hanging and fisher plays a bishop to d3 uh, so it's a new move or rather
Fighter in those days. It was a new move, and uh, uh, you know, as of this game from 1959, this position has never uh, reached uh, any board uh, ever again. Uh, but Bishop to d3 is not the best way to go. Uh, yes, you are defending the c2 pawn, but uh, the c2 is a doubled pawn. So here, actually, best for P Fisher would be knight to h3. I will just show it because it's uh, fun. Not only are, are you allowing knight captures on h4, you're also allowing queen captures on c2. So if you go for queen captures on c2, then you play bishop to d3, you give up the pawn, and now you have some very, very impressive development here. Uh, black will not uh, enjoy this position all that much. So what you will probably have to do after knight h3 is capture the h4 pawn, attack the queen, and after the queen moves and defends the pawn, now black will have some things to worry about as after this knight moves and the knight is coming to g5, the h4 knight will be hanging. So let's say bishop a6, we're going to play knight to g5, and this is a very, very complicated position where... Uh, both uh, both players uh, have something to say, but it, it's definitely better than what Fisher went for. So okay, Bishop played Bishop to D, not Bishop. Fisher played Bishop to D3, uh, defends the pawn, attacks the knight, and Ivkov now plays Bishop to A6. Uh, he's saying, uh, are you maybe interested in capturing this knight on G6 because uh, you will double up my uh, G pawn? But if Fisher goes for this, then F captures. It's very tricky now. Uh, Ipkov has a double G pawn, but look at this monster bishop and the, the king. Where is Fisher's king uh, gonna go in the future? It's not gonna go king side, it's uh, well, not gonna go queen side, and it's not feeling all that great in the center of the board. So here, Fisher just goes G4. Uh, he, he wants to get, get this captures, captures, and then push the pawn all the way to h5. And okay, uh, Ivkov captures on g4, queen captures, and now bishop captures on d3. Uh, Fisher recaptures, c captures on d3, and now knight to c6. Ivkov now wants the castle queen side, and uh, he's saying that uh, now the center is pretty much closed. Okay, Fisher might be able to execute c4 at some point, but uh, other than that, I don't see how uh, my king could be in danger and your king will be uh, very easily attacked. And uh, uh, the thing is also, uh, Ivkov is preventing h5. If he if Fisher tries h5 now, which seems like a good idea, we can just capture on e5. The pawn cannot capture, the queen would hang on g4, and you don't really want to capture on g7 because the d3 pawn uh, falls with check. So you're going to have to play something like queen to g3, defend the pawn, uh, and then we can just move the knight, knight back to d7. And well, it's a, it's a really crazy position, but should be should be okay for black. Uh, so instead, after knight to c6, we have queen to g5 by Fisher. Uh, getting out of this fourth rank, now preparing h5, and now Ivkov just plays knight c to e7. He says, you are welcome to attack my knight, so Fisher does. We have knight to f5. This is not a threat yet, as the rook would be hanging on h1. Again, the problem of having the rooks... Uh, uh, disconnected, so knight to e2, uh, and here we have knight g to e7. Still, not all that much for Fisher to do here. We have knight g3, putting pressure on the knight here, and Ivkov just castles queen side. Uh, we have queen to g4 by Fisher, and now rook d to f8. And now Ivkov is preparing f6. He says, your king is in the center of the board. I'm going to play f6, bust open the position, and then uh, good luck defending this. So Fisher plays h3. The rook might come in handy, defending the, the third rank. And now, finally, king to b8, uh, getting the, the king to a little bit of a safer square. Here it could be vulnerable in the future. Now comes bishop to g5 by Fisher, uh, and now queen to c2, putting pressure on the c3 pawn and d3 pawn uh, and okay fisher does have a rook on the third rank but um, it's still not going to be easy here fisher plays rook to c1 uh, attacks the queen and tries to get ifkov to uh, to capture the pawn on d3 but it uh, wouldn't really do all that much uh, it's perfectly fine for black if fisher captures for example on f5 attacks the queen uh, ifkov can just capture back with the queen on f5 and still black is better so instead after rook c1 we have queen to b2 now going after the a3 pawn uh, Fisher advances it to a4 and now queen to a3 again going after the pawn and now Fisher just goes back queen to d1 the pawn is now nicely defended uh, but uh, that's pretty much all all there is to, to Fisher's position and now uh, Ivkov could just play f6 and continue with the plan and that's perfectly fine but he decides to trade here knight captures on g3 we have f captures if the rook captures then we can just bring the knight to f5 with tempo so we have g uh, f captures on g3 
And now knight to c6. Now the knight is preventing the pawn from ever uh, uh, being pushed to a5. And also you can pretty much bring it anywhere you want. Uh, here we have h6 by Fisher, uh, And this is now where things get really, really tricky. Here Fisher is trying something. Uh, but there isn't all that much to try. Uh, we have g captures on h6. Bishop to f6 now attacking the rook. And now if you play the rook to h7. Then uh, you are never getting it out. The dark squares will be just covered by Fisher's bishop. So rook h the g8 now we're gonna play rook g6 double up on the g file and go after the g3 pawn so king f2 uh, before you attack here you have to defend here and now just rook g6 Ivkov defends the dh6 pawn we have queen to c2 uh, and now rook f to g8 putting more pressure on the g3 pawn uh, and now rook to b1 uh, here Fisher is saying okay uh, you have uh, a lot of pressure here but you can't really do anything uh, as long as my king and rook are uh, guarding this um, uh, g3 pawn so maybe I'm going to be able to push something maybe c4 maybe a5 maybe maybe, maybe something happens uh, and also there are ideas like uh, rook to b3 where you will not be able to capture because of rook capture some b6 with check so there, there, are, there is poison in the position so here queen back to a fade by Ivkov he says I'm not having any of that uh, let's just play this uh, very calm I'm going to bring my knight to the e7 and then you will have to give up your dark square bishop otherwise the knight is coming to f5 and then I'm just going to break through. So here Fisher plays a5 he wants to keep the knight here as long as possible even though uh, it's not all that much uh, but okay knight captures on a5 and now queen to a4 now the threat is of course queen captures on a5 the b pawn is pinned so if and of course you can bring it back as the queen covers the c6 square so if uh, plays uh, king to a8 now uh, you don't really have anything here and now rook to b5 fisher knows that he's much worse here and he's just trying to survive now he wants to play rook captures um, uh, knight on a5 and go for some sort of a perpetual or maybe even a mating attack to, to give you an example the problem is there's no easy way for Ivkov to make a mistake the position is so good for black uh, you don't really have any moves uh what can you play if you play something like rook to g4 the move makes no sense but just to give you an example uh fisher's idea is rook captures on a5 and now after b captures queen c6 check uh, king b8 and now we're going to play rook h1 followed by rook to b1 and here white uh, is the one attacking maybe having some chances uh but ifkov doesn't allow that he plays queen to e8 now he says all right once the <laughs> the rook moves i'm picking up the queen um uh, uh, or, or even if you play rook captures on a5, I'm just going to play b captures on a5. Uh, I, I don't really care now. Uh, it's perfectly fine for black. So instead, after queen e8, Fisher starts attacking again. He plays c4. Now comes knight c6. And Ivkov's plan is the same. He wants to play knight e7, knight f5, and that's it. So queen to a1. Uh, this will this will come in handy, as you'll see. Now comes d captures on c4. D captures on c4. And now, okay, the queen is defending the d4 pawn, but just queen d7. Now we're uh, attacking the d4 pawn uh, two times, and there's no way for white to defend this. So here, c5 by Fisher, but now queen captures on d4 with check. And here, uh, Ivkov forces a queen trade. So queen captures knight, captures, attacks Fisher's rook on b5, rook b4, and now knight to f5 uh, attacking the pawn three times uh, and there's not much you can do about this so Fisher plays c6 tries to trap maybe the black king a little bit maybe if the this rook moves away from the the back rank maybe this rook can somehow end up here and deliver checkmate it's not much but uh, of course Fisher will try everything so rook to g4 not even going for a nice capture here and allowing any tricks uh, Ivkov just uh, trades off the another uh, the, the first pair of rooks and then uh, Fisher will not have all that much to do. So rook captures on g4, rook captures, we have rook to h1, and now uh, a5, uh, making some breeding room for the king, so you no longer have to worry about any tricks. Rook to g1, and now uh, a4. Now Ivkov just starts pushing the past a pawn, and once Fisher stops this, then the past b pawn will also join the party. So rook to d1 by Fisher, now rook d4. Offering a rook trade, we have rook back to g1, now comes rook d2 check, king f3, rook d3 check, king f4, and now finally rook captures on g3 here Ivkov says I can even give up a piece because if you uh, pick uh, win the piece then a3 just wins there's no way for the bishop to stop the pawn from reaching a1 so instead uh, here we have rook to c1 but now rook to d3 
Uh, we have uh, king to g4, not much for Fisher to do, but wait, we have a3, rook to a1, now comes b5. Now the b-pawn is marching forward, we have rook to b1, we have a2 by Ivkov, uh, and he was in this position on move 52 that uh, Bobby Fisher resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. So once the rook goes to a1, then we're just going to play rook to a3, defend the pawn, and then b4, b3, b2, and Fisher will resign. So, of course, Fisher knows this, and he doesn't wait for it. Uh, after A2, he resigned the game. And if you guys are interested in the standings of the Santiago tournament of 1959, these are the standings. So the tournament was won by none other than Borislav Ivkov uh, himself, or rather, it was shared first place between Ivkov and Pachman, two of the strongest European players that, that joined the tournament. Uh, and... Um, as you can see, Fisher was somewhere in, uh, what is this, shared third, uh, uh, as that's how they, they were rating the, the, the standings back then. Uh, he had uh, seven wins, the same as uh, Ivkov and Pachman, but he, he lost uh, a lot more games. He lost four games, whereas uh, Ivkov and uh, Pachman uh, only lost one. So very impressive performance, uh, a very nice game as you can see, uh, he really knew how to how to handle the, the French defense and it's a very tricky line, uh, it doesn't matter how much you learn the French, it, it always uh, you know keeps surprising us and sometimes you know, uh, it, okay it's out, out of fashion then again it uh, it's very popular and then you have like Yanni uh, uh, Pomnishi uh, employing it in the candidates tournament, uh, so uh, French defense will, will live forever. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, again, very sad news about about Borislav Ivkov, but that's life. What are you gonna do? Uh, he he brought the joy to many chess players throughout the world, and uh, well, uh, I amongst uh, 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 other players uh, started my chess journey. You know, uh, with uh, with, with uh, uh, his work and with uh, you know fine books uh, like like these. So it, if, if you're only starting out, it's uh, it's a very nice book, uh, but you know I don't know how how much. Uh, uh, use of it, it actually is nowadays because you can get so much done online uh, but uh, you know I, I still I still enjoy a, a, a good book uh, so yeah okay uh, that's the game I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed it like I said we could have covered pretty much uh, any game but uh, I thought you guys might enjoy this one as it is against Bobby Fischer and it is the French defense uh, so yeah hope you enjoyed that uh, as well uh, I would like to wish a very happy birthday to Paul Worthington and I would like to thank Francis Air, the emoji pillow on my couch uh, Odalt and Lucifer 45 non-commercial EP for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot I really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and I will see you soon continuing uh, the coverage of the FIDE Grand Prix, checking up uh, on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens uh, in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.